Hi, I'm Sachit Mishra, and today I'm going to show you how fast and easy it is to build apps for the Google Assistant using API AI. These apps can be used by anyone with access to the Assistant on Google Home and eligible mobile devices. For this video, I'll build an Assistant app similar to the one used in our Facts About Google sample hosted on GitHub. The Facts About Google sample works by telling the user facts about either Google's history or its headquarters, whichever the user prefers. But once we're finished here, you can go to our developer site to build out the sample further and insert your own facts with whatever you know a lot about, like cats or knitting. Let's go to the API AI tool, and I'll show you the steps to build this from scratch. First, let's log into the Actions console and click Add a Project. We'll give it some name, and a new project is created. The Actions console is the starting point for any new Assistant app. It lets us choose our tools for development, gives us access to analytics and testing utilities, and provides the forms to enter the directory listing information about the app. Here, we're given the option of either using API AI or the raw Actions SDK with our own NLU, or Natural Language Understanding Solution. Let's choose API AI. We're logged into API AI, and an agent has been created for us. An API AI agent is an NLU module for your product or service. The term agent in API AI maps to an app for assistant. So for the purpose of this video, consider them to mean one and the same. After creating the agent, we are taken to the intents screen. Intents and entities are two main concepts important to creating interaction scenarios in API AI. Intents are entry points into the conversation and map what a user says to what your conversational experience should say or do. There might be many different ways for the user to say one thing they want, but they should all resolve to one type of response, determined by a single intent. A conversation will be made up of many back and forth turns in which each of the user's responses maps to an intent. Notice that our app already has a default fallback intent. This will be triggered when the user says something that isn't recognized. It also has a default welcome intent. This is the main entry point to our conversation, as shown by the fact that it is triggered by the welcome event. Let's get rid of some of these pre-made greetings and specify our own. Something like, welcome to facts about Google, which one do you want to hear about, Google's history or its headquarters? This serves to acknowledge the user and separate our Assistant app from the Google Assistant, as well as direct the user to the next turn in the conversation, in this case using an either-or question. Remember, all your prompts should be a reflection of your app's persona. This is vital to creating a great experience. Before I move on to the next intent, I'll need to create some custom entities. Entities are objects that serve to enumerate the different things people will talk about in their natural speech input. You will use entities as slot-filling parameters required for business logic in your intents. In API AI, there are two different types of entities. There are pre-built system entities to handle the most popular common concepts like time, number, address, date, etc. And then there are developer entities, which we'll use here. I'll create developer entities using the API AI web console, but you can also upload them in JSON and CSV formats or through API calls. To get started, facts about Google should know two categories of facts. History, which might also be termed past, and headquarters, or HQ. Once I'm all done, I'll have something like this. Next, I'll create an intent for the use case that our Assistant app will support, telling a fact. Let's create the intent tell underscore fact, then add a few examples of how the user may ask to hear a fact. We are expecting the user to respond to the prompt given in the welcome intent, or possibly ask us for a fact after they've already heard one. So they might say something as simple as history, or something more complicated like, I'd love to hear something about Google's history. As I'm adding new examples, you can see how they're automatically annotated with the facts category entity. This means the user can provide the entity value directly in the phrase used to trigger this intent. We can change the annotation, the names of parameters, and the entities to fit our use case. API AI will learn from the annotated examples and entities to understand more variations of such requests. Let's add a few more examples of what a user might say to trigger this intent. Tell me about Google's HQ. I want to hear about the history of Google. Can you tell me about Google's headquarters? Give me a fact about Google. Generally, you'd want to provide about 10 to 12 samples to train API AI on variations a user might say. Notice that the last phrase does not include the fact category entity, indicating to API AI that the category won't always be specified in the triggering phrase. Down here, I'll name the action for this intent as tell.fact, which will be the trigger for my business logic to get the relevant response. 
As a side note, be aware that actions on API AI have a different meaning than actions on Google. Again, we can see how the fact category parameter was created automatically from the annotated examples. This intent has only one parameter, but you can imagine one that might take a whole bunch, like a recipe finding intent that might need a list of ingredients and dish types. Facts about Google won't be able to tell a fact without knowing which category of fact the user wants, so I'm going to mark this parameter as required and add a prompt for it. Facts about Google will use these prompts to request the missing information if it was not provided directly in the phrase used to trigger this intent, like if the user just said, give me a fact about Google. You can add more than one of these prompts for each parameter to add variation. Our prompt will be something like, which would you prefer to hear about, Google's history or its headquarters? Let's hard code a simple fact in for now, like Google was founded in 1998. Now we can test out this intent right in the API AI simulator. Let's try one of the phrases we provided, give me a fact about Google. We can see that this intent was matched, and we get the prompt for the fact category parameter because it wasn't provided in the triggering phrase. And after answering that, we get the hard-coded response given here. But our actual response is going to change depending on which type of fact the user wants to hear, so we can't just hard-code one. In order to provide this sort of dynamic experience, we'll need to add a webhook to our API AI agent. This will be a web-hosted endpoint that API AI can query for a given intent in order to provide some response. Your webhook will need to be an HTTPS endpoint built on any technology of your choosing. It will be responsible for parsing the incoming API AI request and returning an appropriately formatted response. This can be a little complicated, so we built a client library in Node.js that can be used to interface with your business logic. Let's take a look at how it can be used to build a Node.js webhook for this app. Here, we have a cloud function that initializes the API AI app class imported from our client library's NPM package and initializes it with the incoming request response pair. We also declare a map called action map, which matches an action string entered in the API AI console to a function handler. In this case, it maps the tell.fact action we wrote in the console earlier to the tellFact function, which will be passed a reference to the API AI app object. Calling app.handleRequest with this action map will trigger the logic to send a response to API AI. The tellFact function does a couple interesting things. First, it initializes some fact string to a default, and then uses the app.getArgument method to pull the value of the fact category parameter in the intent. Based on that value, it fetches some fact for the user. Then it forms a response for the user. The response used is based on the surface capabilities of the user device. If the device has the ability to output visual information on a screen, like a phone, a rich response is used, which includes a simple response chat bubble, a card with some text, and an image with its own alternative text for accessibility. Finally, the response includes some suggestion chips to further the conversation. For devices which cannot output to a screen, a simple string is used as a spoken response to the user. Now that we've built our webhook as a cloud function and deployed to a hosting solution like Google Cloud Functions, we'll need to tell API AI to use it. To do that, go to Fulfillment, click Enabled under the webhook settings, and type in your webhook's hosted address. Then head back to the tell fact intent and check Use Webhook at the bottom. This will tell API AI to use the response provided from your webhook instead of one you typed here for this intent. Again, we can test this intent right in the API AI simulator, but this time, let's not use a phrase given in our user says section. Let's try, tell me something interesting about Google's past. And immediately we get the simple response generated from our webhook. This is one of the coolest things about API AI. It's machine learning trained on the phrases we provided, recognized the user input even if it didn't match the examples verbatim, called the webhook, and provided the response. Pretty neat, huh? We can also check out the JSON request sent to our webhook here. Normally, it'd be a little hard to parse this, but our client library made it easy. We can also check out the training section of the API AI console to see what input has matched against our intents. And we can even make live corrections to the intents and entities being matched right on the spot. We've got something that works well here, but we'd like to round out this conversation just a little bit more. For instance, the user might be confused as to what they can achieve with this assistant app. So let's create a help intent that accepts phrases like, what can you do, or I need help. Again, remember to provide more examples than I am here. We can provide some simple help response to try to direct the user to our tell fact intent. I can tell you all about Google's history or its headquarters, which would you prefer? An even better option here might be to just provide a fact to the user to give them some foothold into the conversation. I encourage you to try that on your own. 
Finally, let's add one more intent called quit, which will let the user leave the conversation. To trigger this intent, the user might say, I'm done now, or bye. And we can provide a polite response like, okay, see you next time. Or even better, if we really want our users to come back, we could say something like, come back tomorrow for a new fact, see you next time, and have our webhook provide a different fact each day. We'll check end conversation at the bottom to tell API AI the conversation ends here. Now that we've got something that works pretty well, let's try this out in the Actions on Google Web Simulator so we can see how this experience would work with the Google Assistant in both a visual and voice context. First, I'll head to the Integrations page and click into the Actions on Google Settings. Then I'll click Test to prepare my app for testing. I can jump over to the Actions on Google console to test it out. First, I'll invoke it with Talk to my test app. Then I'll try a simple phrase like History, please. Before triggering the next intent, let's change the simulated device to phone, and then say, tell me about Google's headquarters. It worked, we got a rich visual response because we were on a screen-based surface. In the case that it doesn't work, I can check out the debug information given on the right side to see the data transferring between the assistant server and my API AI agent. Now, before I submit, I'd wanna build out this experience a little further to provide a better user experience and more content. You can find out how to do all this in the fuller Facts About Google sample at our developer site. Once we do all that, we can head back to API AI and click Update. This will tell the Actions console to update the app with what I have here. Now I can provide some information about our app in the console. I'll give it a display name of Facts About Google. This will be the name shown in the directory. You will need to make sure to give your app a unique invocation name that follows the naming policies published in our documentation. I can use the microphone to help the console determine the pronunciation by saying facts about Google aloud. Here I can give the app an introduction, choose its voice, and provide a description which is clear about what the app does. After that, I'll provide some sample invocations. Our docs cover the different ways to invoke your app other than the typical one shown here, but I have no other invocations, so I'll just keep the default. If you add others, make sure you test them. Our reviewers will test that they actually work. Next, I'll provide a couple images. Some optional testing instructions and provide my email and a link to my privacy policy. Once we've got all this filled out, we'll head back to the top and hit save. Normally, I determine my app's required surface capabilities here, but mine will work with all devices, so we can leave the default. Now that that's all done, I can click submit. The app is submitted and now I can monitor the submission status here. At this point, your app will enter our review process and, if accepted, will be deployed to assistant devices everywhere. Once it's been approved, the app is made available to anyone using the Google Assistant on Google Home and other eligible devices. Remember, you can always test before approval with your own device as long as it is linked to your developer account. Let's try it now. Okay, Google, talk to my test app. Sure, here is the test version of my test app. Welcome to Facts About Google. Which one do you want to hear about, Google's history or its headquarters? Let's hear a headquarters fact. Here's a fact for you. Google has over 15 cafeterias on its main campus. Which one do you want to hear about next, Google's history or headquarters? Here's a fact for you. Google released the first version of Android in 2008. Which one do you want to hear about next, Google's history or headquarters? I'm done now. Come back tomorrow for a new fact. See you next time. So that is a really quick demo of some of the powerful features available in the Actions Console and API AI Developer Tool. You can find out more about Actions on Google by checking out the console or reading the documentation at developers.google.com actions. That's where you can find the more complete Facts About Google sample and walkthrough, as well as the number Genie sample, which is a great reference for design best practices. We also have an Actions on Google G Plus community, so you can ask your questions and share your ideas with everyone. I'm Sachit Mishra. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing what you build. <laughs>